So we decided to take our celebration virtual again this year, but we do have a special t-shirt that we'd like to send you as a token of appreciation for your participation tonight and throughout the year. So stick around until the end of the program to find out how to make sure that we get uh, one of those t-shirts to you. I wanna begin by acknowledging that the ACLU of Northern California exists on the occupied and unceded territory of over 100 tribes land which has been stewarded by indigenous people since time immemorial. I also wanna recognize the painful history upon which the state of California was created and how systems, policies, and structures continue to oppress and er erase indigenous peoples today. Since we at the ACLU of Northern California returned to in-person work and travel in October, I visited the occupied lands of Tongva, Yokuts, Ohlone and Miwok people among others. And I live in what's currently known as Richmond, California um, in the Bay Area. This is the unceded territory of the Chochenyo speaking people of the Confederated Villages of Lishan, one of many Ohlone nations. The Lishan are made up of people from six nations who were enslaved at the Mission San Jose in Fremont and the Mission Dolores in San Francisco. I wanna talk for just a moment about current organizing efforts to protect sacred shell mound sites. Shell mounds are sacred burial sites for indigenous people of the Bay Area. And most of these sites are now paved parking lots and buildings. One such sacred site turned parking lot is located at 1900 4th Street in West Berkeley, where despite the asphalt, Ohlone people, including the Confederated Villages of Lishan, continue to use this space as a place for community prayer and ceremony. But a proposed condo and shopping development would obliterate any chance that the site continue to be used as a sacred space. Instead of this shopping and condo development, Ohlone leaders have proposed an alternative, an open space with native vegetation where people can gather, an educational center, and space to revitalize indigenous cultural traditions. So if you live in the Bay Area, you may find yourself near the West Berkeley Shell Mound during the holiday shopping season. Like I said, 4th Street, many shops around that area. Um, and I hope you'll take a moment if you're there to reflect on the life and history that was built in and on these places and consider how you can support the indigenous people who are still here today. I have a suggestion for a way you can do that. Um, you can write a letter in support of the Berkeley Shell Mound Preservation, or you can contribute to the Shell Mound Preservation Fund. And my colleague Tessa is dropping in the chat a link to learn more about the Shell Mound Preservation and how you can support those efforts. And with that, I am very pleased to welcome and introduce Abdi Sultani, who is the Executive Director of the ACLU of Northern California. Welcome, Abdi. Uh, thank you so much, um, Ashley, and uh, thank you everybody for being here. Can you all hear? Me? Can you hear me? Okay. Great. Uh, so, really appreciate everybody being here today for our Bill of Rights Day. I'm Abdi Sultani. I'm the Executive Director of ACLU Northern California. My pronouns are he and him, um, and I'm really just thrilled to share a few reflections on this Bill of Rights Day about the State of the Union. Uh, the union being both our country, but also of the ACLU of Northern California. Um, and I want to just thank each and every one of you who is participating and recognizing all the different communities um, in the chat, uh, from Folsom to West Oakland uh, to San Francisco and many other places. Um, today is Bill of Rights Day, and we come together to recognize um, the work uh, that all of you do throughout the year to defend and protect civil liberties and civil rights. Uh, as members, activists, volunteers, um, partners, we appreciate what you do uh, to defend those bedrock principles in the Bill of Rights, in the Constitution, and the values of equality, freedom, and justice that we work towards together every day. Um, the Bill of Rights begins with the First Amendment and the First Amendment right to freedom of speech, assembly, and petitioning the government for redress of grievances is what you do every day uh, through your volunteerism, your activism uh, in service of social and economic and racial justice. So with that, I want to just share a couple of reflections about how we're doing as a country. Um, 
you know, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the principles that we all fight for every day, the right to vote, uh, these are all under attack uh, very directly and explicitly, uh, as we saw on January 6th at the Capitol at the, after the 2020 election in the Supreme Court uh, with the decision in Dobbs and others that reverse precedents of protecting the right to abortion. Um, the meaning of due process and liberty uh, that's fundamental to the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment that were the bedrock of uh, so many of our civil rights gains of over generations are clearly under attack by the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, and we also see basic attacks on First Amendment rights, the rights of school teachers and others, educators, to teach about uh, racial and gender and sexual orientation issues in schools and the attack on all kinds of education that's happening around the country. Um, I am proud uh, to be part of the ACLU nationwide network that's fighting these rights and protecting these rights throughout the country, uh, whether in the state of Georgia or Tennessee or Texas. Uh, but I wanna just take a moment and share a few points and highlights about our work here in California and our role here in California. Uh, we're a state that's 40 million strong and every community, every city, every county of our region and the state as a whole have to be a beacon for freedom, for equality and for justice. So what that calls on us to do is to both advance civil liberties and civil rights in our region, as well as to make sure that policies that are passing in California or in our local communities um, meet the standard of civil liberties and civil rights and that we stop attacks on our rights in our communities here in our state as well. Um, to highlight a couple of the major issues and areas of our work in recent years, um, picking up on Ashley's land acknowledgement, I really want to highlight the work that's being done throughout our affiliate um, by our chapters, our volunteers, activists, and partners on Indigenous justice, and most importantly on Native communities um, with whom we have the honor to work. One of the major victories this year is the passage of AB 2022, um, which is a bill that came out of a campaign in Fresno to rename a community, and I'll only say this word once, that was called Squaw Valley. I'm proud to say it was past tense as we've succeeded despite the opposition of the Fresno County Board of Supervisors uh, to pass state legislation that will remove that uh, pejorative term from every one of a hundred places in our state uh, that have that term. And it's a campaign that was uh, led by native people in Fresno and now will be called Yokuts Valley uh, in honor of the people of that region. That campaign was only possible because of the activism and leadership of both indigenous leaders, but also uh, so many other supporters in Fresno and statewide who came together uh, to rally in defense of civil rights. I also wanna highlight a major gain in our victory on legislation on the Racial Justice Act. Many of you have been working together for years on racial justice and criminal justice reform. The new bill, uh, AB 256, um, is one that builds on the Racial Justice Act of two years ago, and the new bill will give us additional rights to challenge racial discrimination in the criminal justice system now retroactively, which will prove a powerful tool. As you all know, uh, abortion rights are under attack throughout the country, and uh, particularly from the US Supreme Court's decision uh, that then led to a floodgate of state uh, trigger laws and others that banned abortion or restricted it severely in many states. I'm proud of the work that we've all done together over years to safeguard abortion rights and in particular this year, uh, the passage of Prop 1, uh, with, in which California voters resoundingly uh, lent their support to defending abortion rights and the right to contraception in our state constitution. The work happens also at the local level and sometimes takes years to develop. And I wanna just give one example um, that came uh, through the work in response to the issues of inequality, racial and economic inequality, and how they manifest in differences in political power and representation. Uh, the Citizens United decision now over 10 years old really has triggered a flood of um, outside spending and campaigns 
And so one of the solutions we've been excited to embrace is um, public financing that allows candidates to raise money from the community. And in Oakland, uh, we partnered with um, other advocacy groups to pass Measure Y, where the voters in Oakland overwhelmingly supported democracy dollars, uh, where every candidate will now be able to participate uh, and uh, raise money from the community rather than through outside funds. With all of that said, you know, this week, uh, the issue of killer robots in San Francisco got all of our attention. And I think it's testament to the vigilance that we need of each and every one of us uh, to defend civil liberties and civil rights everywhere in Northern California and throughout the United States. We're grateful uh, to each and every one of you for your volunteerism and activism. And I'm really excited today that we're honoring uh, two great champions of civil liberties and civil rights. Uh, and I really just wanna say my appreciation to all of you for being here with us tonight. Thank you. All right, now I'd like to welcome Mickey Welsh to present our first award. Hello, everyone. I'm here to talk about our first honoree, Elliot Bruckowitz Roberts. Elliot has become kind of a legend here in Monterey County. He is a teacher, a professor emeritus from Monterey Peninsula College, very knowledgeable speaker and frequently asked to speak on various issues. He is also an activist and an organizer. He has very effective methods of working together with other organizations, and he indeed is a courageous advocate. He's also an accomplished poet, and Elliot has brought grace and art into his work and into the ACLU to share with us. And all along, Elliot's kind and inclusive leadership style has inspired countless students and new activists and chapter board and volunteers throughout Northern California for decades. It all started back in the early 80s when he joined the Monterey County Chapter Board. He served many terms as board chair. He also served as secretary. And we can tell you that if you want the best possible minutes, hire a writer and poet as your secretary works great. He led the chapter on so many issues over the years, racial justice, working together with NACP, LULAC and other organizations, reproductive justice, even dating back to when Operation Rescue was active here in Monterey County, freedom of speech and assembly, freedom of religion, uh, dating back to the nativity scene case when it was put up in front of Monterey City Hall, LGBT rights, including work, against Proposition 8 and the fight for marriage equality. But Elliot was particularly successful with criminal justice issues over the years working on policies and police practices with tasers long ago, with use of force policies, and most recently working with a various a series of sheriffs at Monterey County to try to have policies to exclude ICE from the Monterey County Jail. Successful as it was, I even predated the Trust Act and the Truth Act and Elliot worked tirelessly to make it known to the inmates in the jail that they have rights and how to pursue them. His work excluding ICE from the jail and making sure that the Trust Act and Truth Act are enforced has been a, a very great accomplishment. Elliot also represented the ACIU chapter on the Community Corrections Partnership for many years since its inception. And there he was able to influence the, the presiding judge, the district attorney, the public defender, the probation chief. Elliot earned their respect. And when he spoke on behalf of the ACLU on issues before this, the Community Corrections Partnership, they listened. He was very effective in that role. 
In fact, I can't think of a single constitutional right that Elliot has not worked on. Well, except maybe the second and third amendments. Those are the only ones I can say maybe I didn't get much attention. But Elliot also served on the board of the ACLU of Northern California. He served uh, many capacities, first as the chapter representative for Monterey, and then as an at-large member. Mm -hmm. He served on many committees, including the chapter field committee, and he chaired the nominating committee. And through that work, many very talented, effective, and brilliant board members uh, to the ACA of Northern California, uh, many of whom may be on this meeting and many of whom are still active with ACLU. We have Elliot to thank for his many accomplishments on the ACLU Northern California Board. Let me just say, Elliot is an effective leader, a courageous advocate, an excellent teacher, a poet, and my treasured friend. I'm honored to present Elliot Ruckowitz Roberts with the 2022 Lola Hansel Courageous Advocacy Award. Congratulations, Elliot. Thank you, Mickey. I'm greatly honored and deeply touched to receive the Lola Hansel Courageous Advocacy Award. I'm honored because the award comes from an organization the ACLU of Northern California, which I deeply respect and admire. Having served on the boards of both the union and the foundation, I know of the deep commitment to civil liberties that is held by the board members and the staff and the absolutely incredible work they have done and continue to do on a day-to-day -day basis. No achievement is the work of any one individual. We are all connected. We are all interdependent. Whatever my achievements, they are not solely my own. They are shared by the board members, the staff, and perhaps even more importantly, the hundreds of chapter grassroots advocates that make the ACLU such an important presence in Northern California. It is on behalf of these grassroots advocates, especially the Northern California chapter boards, that I accept this recognition. But the award also has special personal significance to me because it continues the incredible legacy of the Monterey County chapter of the ACLU of Northern California. One present and two former Monterey County chapter board members, each of whom I have worked with and admired and have had close relationships, Dick Criley, Kathy Stoner, and Mickey Welsh have been honored by the affiliate. So to become part of this incredible group of advocates touches me profoundly on a deep personal level. I was recruited to the Monterey County chapter by my Carmel Highlands neighbor, Dick Criley. Dick was an incredible advocate for civil liberties throughout his life, including years of labor organizing on the West Coast and in the Midwest. Among his many notable achievements, he was co-founder of the National Committee to Abolish the House Un-American Activities Committee. Subpoenaed twice to appear before UAC, he refused to testify both times, confounding, completely confounding the committee members by continually invoking his First Amendment right to freedom of speech. Thanks in part to his efforts, UAC was abolished in 1976. The Monterey County chapter honored him by creating and then voting him to the position of executive director of the chapter, a position that did not exist in any other Northern California chapter. And in 1984, the chapter honored him with its Francis Heisler Civil Liberties Award. He once summarized the reason for his defense of the Bill of Rights as freedoms for all or freedom for none. Our system of individual rights depends upon their availability to everyone, including some people whose beliefs we may not like, he said. If the constitutional rights of any unpopular group or minority are weakened, we will all lose some of our freedom in the process. 
1985, Dick was honored by the ACLU of Northern California with its Earl Warren Civil Liberties Award. On receiving the award, Mr. Criley quipped, 25 years ago, the very thing I'm getting an award for made me a non-person. I had a wonderful mentor in Dick, when he died in 2000, I wrote an elegy for him, one which I think speaks to the Lola Hansel Courageous Advocacy Award, how grassroots advocacy requires skill and strength and intelligence and patience, and how more importantly, we do not work in isolation. There are always those whose work we draw on, those who are listening and learning, and those who follow us having been shown how to go on. Dick lived across Highway 1 from me in the Carmel Highlands, south of Monterey. Many a day I would hear him, even into his 80s, splitting wood. And that is the image that came to mind when I sat down to write the elegy for his memorial service. Guiding me on my way were poets I had listened to, Matthew Arnold, Robert Frost, and Gary Snyder, whose lines have worked their way into the fabric of the poem. Splitting Wood. The metal mall striking the metal wedge, like the clapper hitting the inside of a bell, drifts up the mountainside over the coast highway, rings above the tremulous cadence of the waves, the ocean speaking as oceans do, of the eternal note of sadness, in a world so like a darkling plain where ignorant armies clash by night. Splitting wood, the heft of the 12 pound mall, the deliberate slow raising above the shoulders, the grip on earth of outspread feet, the life of muscles rocking soft and smooth and moist, the arc above the head, then falling by its own weight, guided by the miracle of human sight, shoulder, arms, hands, eyes, so coordinated that the flat head of the mall strikes solidly, squarely on the flat hedge of the wedge, hits true and rings and the wood splits, the halves of the round falling cleanly from the block. The way your mind worked, focused so clearly, so cleanly, you knew the grain of what stood before you, how to place the wedge, you cleaved issues, and while you could not, no human can, some things too gnarled to split, Stop the waves from echoing on the shore. Stop the turbid ebb and flow of human misery. You let us hear the pure sound of what could be, of a world attuned to the common good where love and need are one and all honored. Now only memory, the sound of you splitting wood, the mall handle you have worn and smooth waits for our hands. You have shown us how we go on. Now before us, the woodpile, cypress, pine, oak, madrone, eucalyptus, waiting to be split. How we go on. After Dick's death, an award for chapter activism was established by the affiliate in his name. The first year and two times afterward, the Monterey County chapter was given the award for its accomplishments. Yes, the Monterey County chapter has been fortunate to have had Dick Criley as a model. For example, when it was still permissible, Dick started an end of the year fundraising drive from chapter members for the ACL Northern California Foundation. The drive continued after his death. Over the years, the chapter membership contributed over one quarter of a million dollars to the foundation. The chapter was also instrumental among many other accomplishments in working with local NAACP and LULAC groups to change the election of Monterey Peninsula Community College trustees from an open election to a five district election. It maintained a presence at community corrections partnership meetings, advocating for alternatives to incarceration and monitoring the county jail situation. It held and co-sponsored numerous public forums on homelessness, the use of drones by law enforcement, LGBT rights, racial profiling, and immigration rights. As part of a coalition, it spent years working on getting the sheriff to stop cooperating with ICE. For many years, it held an essay writing contest for middle and high school students in Monterey County, with the award-winning essays being read at our annual meeting. In almost all areas, the chapter board members have been and continue to be 
fierce defenders for the rights of all. I am honored to receive the Lola Hansel Courageous Advocacy Award because two chapter members are previous recipients of the award. My dear friends, Kathy Stoner, who received the award in 1992, and Mickey Welsh, who received it in 2005. And they have also been wonderful mentors. Mickey and Kathy were among the many who made history when they were married at San Francisco City Hall on February 16th, 2004. Mayor Gavin Newsom had approved the issuance of marriage licenses by the city and county clerk. However, six months later, the California Supreme Court invalidated the marriages on the grounds that the mayor did not have the authority to contravene state law, which defined marriage as between a man and a woman after the passage of Proposition 22 in 2000. After the California Supreme Court ruled Proposition 22 unconstitutional in May of 2008, Mickey and Kathy were married on July 5th, 2008, which was the 34th anniversary of their living together. Revolution, written for their marriage in 2004, was read at the reception following that marriage and at their marriage in 2008. Reading their wedding poem is, I think, a fitting way to conclude because Kathy and Mickey's act of revolution, that is of getting married, epitomizes the courage, the tenacity and the commitment to civil liberties, which has characterized all grassroots advocates of the ACLU, all of you out there watching this Bill of Rights Day celebration, all of you who over the years have made a difference and will continue to make a difference. Revolution. For Mickey and Kathy in celebration of their marriage on February 16th, 2004. I had thought revolution's core was rage and hatred, robed in ideals pristine and unattainable like freedom or dictatorship of the proletariat or all power to the people, but never until now have I known love as revolution's heart and such joy. Yours is not a revolt, but a revolving, an axial turning, the way the earth revolves on its axis, an orbital turning, earth revolving around sun and moon around earth. Love's gravity sweeps me into this revolution, so we have become brother and sisters. Sisters, you are writing and rewriting history, for is not love hidden and much maligned at the heart of all revolution? Your love turns our world on its axis. Now we can see you bathed in light entire, no dark side of the moon any longer. And so dear sisters, here's to love that makes history, to revolutions that bring such joy to our hearts, to acts that dispel darkness, to revolving planets and moons and all your act has set in motion, a spinning in my own heart and these whirling words, testament, to this tangible freedom of spirit, this dictatorship of the heart, this power to all people who open themselves to love. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elliot. Your words bring joy to our hearts. Now, please join me in welcoming our next presenter, the director of the ACLU of Northern California's Gender, Sexuality, and Reproductive Justice Program, Arnita Rogers. Hi, everyone, and thank you, Elliot. That was really moving. My name is Arnita Rogers, and I use she and they pronouns, and I'm the Gender, Sexuality, and Reproductive Justice Director here at ACLU NorCal. And I have the pleasure of awarding uh, Jan Robinson Flint with the Chief Justice Earl Warren Civil Liberties Award. Um, I've also had the pleasure of working in the reproductive justice movement with Jan for over the decades, so this is a great honor for me. So Jan is the executive director and the founder of Black Women for Wellness, which is an LA-based intersectional reproductive justice organization dedicated to the health and well-being of Black women and girls through health education, empowerment, and advocacy. And they are a longtime partner in statewide advocacy with ACLU NorCal. 
So the fall of Roe has left many inside and outside of our movement rightfully weary and dejected about what such an assault on the right to bodily autonomy and what the impacts would be of such a devastating reversal of reproductive rights would have, even here in California, where our legal protections for abortion remain strong. But organizations like Black Women for Wellness and leaders like Jan have been blazing trails and providing us with a blueprint to continue our fight for true reproductive justice and self-determined family formation, health, and liberation for years. They've also shown us through culturally responsive, affirming, and adv advocacy strategies that Black women, who bear the brunt of many forms of reproductive, social, political, economic, and environmental oppression, possess the wisdom, fortitude, and creativity to lead the way. Specifically, Jan and BWW, for short, have always reminded us that California's rosy picture of reproductive rights and access to comprehensive sexual and reproductive health care, including abortion and health outcomes, are far from an are far from equitable for Black women and girls and other communities on the margin. Over the years, the ACLU has been lucky to partner with Jan and BWW on legislative campaigns to ensure that students have comprehensive sexual health education in public and charter schools throughout the state and to repeal the classist and racist maximum family grant that punished the reproductive decision-making of low-income people, Black and other people of color. Demonstrating what truly intersectional advocacy looks like they conducted community, Black Women for Wellness conducted community-based research on toxic air and beauty products as drivers of reproductive health disparities in Black women that paved the way for legislation that mandate more transparency in products that we use every day. They've advanced legislation that required implicit bias training for healthcare providers to address disparities in Black maternal health, and in a historic feat, led a coalition of reproductive justice advocates to pass the California Momnibus, which reimagines maternal health for birthing people and new parents and created new programs like medical med like coverage for doula care for people who receive Medi Medi-Cal and mandated the collection of data on pregnancy related deaths and maternal morbidity to address those disparities. Over the years, we've learned so much and our advocacy has been deeply enriched through our work in partnership and the California Coalition for Reproductive Freedom with Black Women for Wellness, where Black Women for Wellness and Jan specifically have courageously called us in to leverage our power with more accountability and to ensure reproductive justice organizations have a meaningful seat at the table in statewide campaigns where the constituencies will be most impacted. Their work is multidisciplinary, utilizing political education, sexual health education and community care as a service, as well as film, art and other media and communications tools to create and educate and to change the narrative around black bodies and black futures. And their advocacy and their advocacy shop is such a powerhouse that in 2017, in the aftermath of the Trump election, they launched the Black Women for Wellness Action Project that is the first C4 entity dedicated to Black women's reproductive justice in the country. Like, whoa. <laughs> so Black feminisms are grounded in the idea that when we practice centering the experiences of Black women, girls, femmes, and gender expansive people, we all get free and we're all able to reap the benefits of a more just society by addressing the issues of those on the margin. I'm so glad that in doing so and in harnessing our power, Jan, we've all been able to benefit from your labor, brilliance, and legacy. Thank you and congratulations. Um, wow. This is like amazing to me. And I absolutely am humbled by, by this award. When, when you all called, I was like, are you sure you had the right person? <laughs> and um, because it's named after such a prestigious person, as well as it, it, it is, I can say it is so nice to get an award while I'm still living and can smell my flowers, right? Um, because so often that doesn't happen that we don't acknowledge the work of the organization and the people uh, until it's a bit late in the game. So first I'd like to say, other than thank you, um, Black Women for Wellness is 
a cohort of Black women who are absolutely amazing and fabulous. And they make me look good. So this, this award belongs to all those women who are part of Black Women for Wellness and a few brothers too. Um, yes, we did start a C4, Black Women for Wellness Action Project. And when I think about the candidates that we endorsed, we endorsed Holly Mitchell, we endorsed Karen Bass, who just won an election for a mayor in Los Angeles, where she was outspent 13 to one in terms of there was a billionaire running who used his own money. But our community saw the value of voting for someone who shared their values and had been in the community for such a long time. And we were able to really do the door knocking in the field that comes along with a grassroots campaign. Um, we endorsed Lola Smallwood Cuevas, uh, who's going to be in the Senate, California State Senate. We've endorsed Tina McGregor, who's in the assembly now. And we've also um, given support to Sydney Calamangra Dove, who's going to Congress. So we are looking at a class of Black women who have champion those bills that we have put on the table, including the Mama Bus bill, and who are continuing to uh, be, to wear capes and be superheroes in California City, Los Angeles, at the State Assembly, State Senate, and also in the Congress. So we are like super thrilled to be able to be a part of a group of folks who are lifting up um, people who share our values, people who are progressive. And, and, that's, and I say people because we've also endorsed a couple of men too, and a couple of folks in Northern California like the Bontas um, in, in their races. So we need those folks more than ever now. California is a beacon of light and of hope. Today, I'm in Washington, D.C. at a conference of state legislators sharing with them some of the policies that we have passed in California, including the Mama Bus, including the Dignity in Pregnancy and Childbirth Act. And a couple of folks from North Carolina came up to me and said, oh, that sounds so wonderful to all our California. And I said, Try it, try it in North Carolina, see what happens, right? And, and try to give them the hope and try to give them the words in terms of model legislations uh, that they can use, right? And say that we are at a pivotal point in this country right now um, where we knew that Roe was the floor, not the ceiling of what we could expect and what we should expect. And now that that floor has been ripped from under many folks, now we have an opportunity to really create uh, access and to create a world that gives dignity and respect to women. So I am, I am humbled that you all see that work that Black Women for Wellness is doing. I am humbled that you all are giving us this award so we can say we, we are supported and can use it as leverage to keep doing what we are doing because that, that is so necessary in terms of to be able to feel this wind at our back, to be able to feel this support because sometimes it, it, it gets mean. It gets it gets a little vicious sometimes walking these halls and and talking to people who you really have to convince that human rights are for everyone, that health care is a human right, that dignity is is to be expected and to be shared with all. So thank you. I appreciate this. I have no poetry, but I will agree with the last awardee that this is all coming from a foundation of love. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jan. 
And I hope you'll continue to feel our wind at your back. We yeah. support you. Okay. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much to Elliot and to Jan, both of you for your leadership. I consider myself personally extremely privileged to have had the opportunity to learn from and hopefully absorb just a small fraction of brilliance from each of you over the years. Um, and as we're wrapping up, I want to, I'm going to unspotlight myself. I want to invite everyone, if you don't have your camera on now, to please turn on your camera. We can stop the screen share. Um, I want to feel like we're all here together in a room. Um, and I want to invite you all to use the reactions, the thumbs up or the little party reaction, or just give us a wave on your camera if you lobbied your state legislators this year. Anyone do that? I see some waves, some thumbs up. Did anyone attend a, an ACLU NorCal chapter meeting or event of your local chapter? I see a lot of our chapter leaders on the screen. Give us a wave. Did any of you text or phone bank for a local ballot measure or a state ballot measure or maybe a bill? Anybody call an elected official? And all of you are here right now, so let's get a thumbs up for attending an ACLU event. All right. Thank you all so much. And if there's anything else that you've participated in this year that you're particularly proud of, I invite you now to share that in the chat. I'd love to hear about it. So elections have passed. Our last election of the year in Georgia has passed. 2023 will give us an opportunity to take a little break from the big hustle of elections while there will still be some local things on the ballot. So we can take a step back and focus on strengthening our movements, organizing, continuing to build so that we can move important policy victories forward. We're starting to gear up for our organizing programs next year, and we'll have a lot of exciting opportunities for you to get involved from local budget advocacy to opportunities to meet with your legislators in person in their district offices to exciting opportunities to engage in advocacy through art. There's a lot that's coming up in 2023 and we want you to be a part of it. You can learn more about what we have coming up at aclunc.org slash take dash action, which Tessa will drop in the chat. And as promised, since you stuck around till the end, we have a special t-shirt for you. It's a pretty blue ACLU t-shirt that we'll hope, we hope you'll wear around and show your ACLU NorCal pride. So you can go to the link in the chat that Tessa just pasted to give us your t-shirt size and your mailing address so we can get those t-shirts sh shipped out to you maybe in December, maybe in January, but we'll send a follow-up email with a little bit of um, additional details about the timeline for that. So again, I'm so grateful to each of you for joining us here tonight, um, to Elliot, to Jan, to all of you for your thoughtfulness and your advocacy throughout the year. And I wanna wish, wish each of you, your friends, your families, your chosen families, peace, health, and happiness throughout the rest of 2022 and into next year. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Happy holidays. Good night, happy, happy holidays. holidays Thanks Bye, everyone. everyone. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone. Thank you so much love. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Have a great Thank night. You. Thank you for coming. Thanks, everyone. Great seeing you. Good night. Good, good night. good to see you. Bye. I like this part. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Bye. 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 Good to see you. I see you, Jen. Bye. This is really fun. Everyone saying hello and talking over each other and being kind of hectic. It's our annual it's, cacophony of it's joy. Organized chaos, Abby. Good night. Take care. All right. <laughs>